get to uh, our boy ASJ. We gonna get the update. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do when they come for you? Now here is a clip from back in the day when you know all the shit went down. I never showed you this, guys, but here is the 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 local news that was reporting what the hell ASJ was up to. All right, let me turn off this uh, closed captions. Federal prosecutors announced the arrest of 18 people, most of them North Texans, for defrauding the COVID area paycheck protection program out of millions of dollars. One of the people arrested, likely a familiar face for many millennials, maybe even their parents, Fox 4 Stephen Dial has our story. Stephen. Yes, Steve. According to investigators, they say that 16 illegal loans were obtained, totaling God, about uh, $3.5 million. Someone was at the home of Austin St. John, uh, known as... Austin St. John. Now, people think I'm, like, obnoxious for just talking about this shit. They'd be like, do not talk about PPP stuff. Don't you, you shouldn't talk about that shit. Meanwhile, the goddamn news is going up to his house on some. FBI, the news is doing this shit as the original Red Power Ranger, but they had no comment. Those facing charges could face up to 20 years in prison, 20 years. This week, federal prosecutors in North Texas announced a huge pandemic relief fraud bust. 18 people arrested for allegedly stealing 18. millions from the Paycheck God Protection Program damn. aimed at helping small businesses navigate pandemic closures. Among those arrested, 47-year-old Jason Geiger, also known as Austin St. John. Best they, they got him. They, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we got him. They got his ass now. Um, he's free for the time being. And, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty. He did plead not guilty, um, but he also uh, blamed it on uh, other people. It is all Jermaine Fultz. So it's there is that. That's known for his role as the original Red Power Ranger from the 1990s. TMZ reports agents swarmed his McKinney home Thursday armed and left with Geiger in handcuffs. We went to his home and a woman in the garage did not want to talk. I'm sorry. I have no that's the wife. They look, they went up to his goddamn house and was like, hey, uh, do you want to talk about your husband's PPP involvement? And she she couldn't say nope fast enough. She no, no, get the fuck off my property. 14 of those arrested are from North Texas. The U.S. attorney's narrative says two men, one from Mineral Wells, the other from Louisville, allegedly this started the scheme to was a the small organized business administration. concerted John Holmes is a former federal prosecutor effort. in North Texas. There's going to be documents that will show the bank account being open, the money coming in, the money going out. All of that will be well documented. Federal investigators right. say one recruited the others into the scheme. Now, let's let's look at the court docs of where he's at. And I remember before we get to there, JDF did say something before his untimely demise. Shout out to the nerd affiliated and who, who got this. Watch real quick. I want you to watch that for one reason. Watch his old interview and watch how he literally just hates me. Watch my interview on Comics Coliseum. And when you watch it, tell me now's the opportunity where I could jab and i'm not going to here's what i'm gonna tell you and this comes out and he talks we'll make mistakes certain people know how he is and all yeah i'm too nice it's just the way it is make your own judgments do not let it destroy your childhood dreams of power rangers okay we all make mistakes thank you for telling me it's time's up now with that <laughs> now i found that <laughs> now JDF could have kicked this goddamn back in if he really wanted to. Hey, you just got arrested for PPP. Uh, yeah, Austin St. John. Uh, uh, I don't care what he say. He don't like JDF. Now, he could play friends with his wife and friends with his daughter. But at the end of the day, um, you know, he felt how he felt. So what did the what did the what did the feds catch his ass doing? Or al allegedly caught him. They, they got him caught in fucking 4K on or about June 17th, 2020. Uh, Jason Geiger, a.k.a. the Red Ranger, a.k.a. Um, Austin St. John, obtained a PP loan for approximately uh, $225,000, well, $225,754,000 for uh, St. John Enterprises. Of the PPP uh, funds obtained, Geiger sent approximately $22,579 to Moran, which I broke this down in a previous video. And invested about one hundred and seventy thousand with Spencer, um, and it was about thirty three thousand missing. And you know, this is the, the real indictment, guys. So this is not not some uh, 
not some play play stuff. And they show, they make it a point to point out that he is indeed facing 20 years and a fine up to 250,000 or a supervisor release up to five years. Now I did previously report that a, a is most likely if convicted to serve about two years. Now, this was his court date, and guys, I stalk this shit. I stalk any court case that come up on my my docket. I stalk it. Uh, it was originally scheduled for November thirteenth. Okay, uh, jury selection and trial was on the twentieth. All this good stuff. He pleaded not guilty, but lo and behold, I went double backed and I saw an agreed motion to continue the trial to my to my dismay i'm like oh shit well why do we got a continuance going on <laughs> why do you gotta why do you gotta continue it's the united states of america filed this agreed motion to continue the case and you're like whoa what the fuck the defendant in this case asj uh was indicted in may 2022 and presently the pretrial conference uh, with the trial uh, to follow thereafter is scheduled for November 20th, which I just showed you. But given the government's conflict with another multi-defendant trial in this district, look, man, they locking everyone up who did this PPP shit. If you defrauded the government, they are coming for you. FBI, open up! Do not think just because some years have passed, they can't come back knocking on that goddamn door. So what do they say? Uh, given the government's conflict with another multi-defendant trial in this district, the recent superseded indictment pulling in additional defendants. Goddamn. Goddamn. God More people about to get locked up. Jesus. And the prospect of multiple pleas. They like, y'all better plead out. Take, take that plea deal. The government requests a continuance, okay? So what, what happened? The government got double booked, okay? They have more two cases that's conflicting, and what's going on? They're like, look, remember, because of the number of defendants expected, which is 10, and ASJ is one of them, they're going to try 10 people in one run court case and basically say, hey, this was a organized uh, PPP ring, <laughs> if you will, Um Moreover, in light of the age of the procedural uh, posture of the Ida matter, the government anticipate the case will proceed um, as scheduled on this current date. That's the other trial, not the ones. OK, so on September 13th, the United States grand jury returned the indictment uh, in this case, naming four, four additional defendants in conspiracy. And, you know, this is not good for ASJ uh, because all it takes is one person to uh, basically turn state's evidence and say, yeah, ASJ was aware. He was in on it. Now, mind you, the government already has a strong case because they have all the banking records, the transactions. Uh, they had text messages and communications and shit. They pretty much got them, you know, dead to rights, if you will, um, with that 98% conviction rate. But, you know, we're innocent until proven guilty, right? Um, so the government take, you know, anticipates it will take time for these individuals to find counsel and view discovery in this case, you know, which is uh, voluminous and contains dozens of financial records, interview reports, loan applications, audio recordings, and images of electronic devices. Look at all the goddamn evidence that they have on 14 people now. <laughs> 14, I think four like played out already. They was like, yeah, I'm guilty. Let me start doing this time now. And then we could, you know, be free later. Um, accordingly, in the interest of trying the individuals uh, charged in the same conspiracy together, the government wants a continuance, okay? They want to continue. Hey, and this continues to, you know, uh, have active and productive plea discussions with defense counsels. Because look, guys, hey, take a fucking plea deal. Take a plea. And people can't take a plea, right? Some people got to go down with the ship. Some people got to... We hit the Titanic. They're like... Are you getting off the boat? They they looking at people and I like, nope, no, I'm innocent. It was it's Jermaine's fault. He 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 set the shit up. Okay. Um the government and so uh ship should he take a plea deal? I don't know. I don't know what they're offering him. I don't know what they're offering him. Probably like a year and a fine if you take a plea deal. Maybe supervised look, if I am ASJ and they offer me supervised release, which is basically probation and a fine, I take that deal like that um but if they not offering that they offering jail time and you remember if you take it to trial you're going to get more time um but at the same time you got to balance some things like he's the primary breadwinner for his family so you have that component you know if he goes to jail now you know who's going to take care of the family so it you know he, he got a lot the lot on his shoulders shout out to ash um but you know the government wants you to plead out if you waste their time you serve more time that's just the way it goes so for these reasons the 
occurrence uh, <laughs> from all, but one of the defendant's counsel seeks a continuance. Okay. Um, th this is how it goes to at least May 2024. So they're trying to push it back. Okay. To May 2024. Hopefully people plead down. That's what they're hoping. You know, as the court has been made aware of prior filings, there is another defendant named in the original indictment who is currently an international fugitive. So they got one dude, he's on the run. He is like, y'all are going to have to fucking catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. I'm not going down for this. The government continues its effort to locate this person uh, through the uh, pertinent diplomatic and foreign channels. Uh, the PPP loan came out and he, 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 got, he, he got the... He got the shuffling, he got the skedaddling, okay? So um, here's the order. The order is granted. And if you guys are wondering where the new court date is, it looks like May 20th, 2024. So um, I'll be covering this. And in the interim, he has to, you know, ASJ has to get permission to go anywhere he wants. Now we are here to Henry After Dark, and we're about to go straight into Pua Magasavi's life. And we are on pace, guys. We're on pace. Uh, where is Brent at? Brent, Brent didn't show up yet, huh? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Brent ain't show up, huh? You like, nah, I'm gonna I'm I'm skip this one, Henry. I'm gonna skip it. <laughs> you see how I be? Uh, shout out to Brent. And I may be meeting uh, ASJ in the in the future, but I, that's gonna be for an interesting meeting. You think you're gonna let me record it? Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs>